There are some t- timelines. I'm going to let Dr. Smato elaborate on that a little bit. There, there are timelines, um, Jonathan. There are different models around the country. University of Washington um, has has a good model. Uh, they all, I, I think, and and Dr. Stamato can either agree or disagree. I'm not sure, but they all seem to indicate for us at this point, the end of April seems to be that that surge point for us. Having said that, we really don't know what that means in terms of actual numbers. But uh, it, it, now the good news is, and we've all seen this over the last week or so, the models are being revised downward. So as we've preached to our community, stay home, stay home, stay home, people are adhering to that, and they're, you're seeing that around the country. And so the projections now are headed uh, in the right direction. That is to say that that curve is flattening, and so those surges that we expect are, are less today than they were even, say, a week ago. Dr. Stamati, you, you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. So, Jonathan, I think that, that the one thing that's important is that we don't have projections ourselves. We work off the projections we're, we're given by public health, the CDC, and then these other places that can run these models. And, uh, you know, the one that the White House has been using is the one from the University of Washington the IHME model, and that has changed dramatically over the next, uh, over the last few weeks. In fact, it's changed for the better almost every week, and at least the folks at the White House seem to think that that is due to this flattening of the curve. As Andy said, the, right now the model is predicting the beginning of the surge the last week of April for Wyoming as a state and then the peak of utilization will be the first week or two in May. Uh, But the numbers in those predictions have fallen dramatically, Uh, and and across the country, not just for Wyoming, but for for all the states that are not already hotspots. So I think that's a good thing, and I I think uh, it, it gives us great heart to think that we we really can beat this. Now, my concern, Jonathan, is, and I know that this concern has been expressed by physicians and public health officials across the country, is that little bit of good news might tempt people to uh, quit doing what they're doing, that is, staying home and social distancing and and perhaps believe, well, this thing is over, we beat it, and now we can return to life as normal. And these models, uh, the the one that the White House is using, most of these models make certain assumptions, and the the assumption to get us to that best-case scenario is that we continue practicing social distancing, physically distancing ourselves from other people, taking all the precautions we're currently taking. So if we don't, then there'll be a resurgence, and, and you, can, you could see another New York all over again if we're not, if we're not careful. And that, that's one of my greatest concerns, I'm sure, uh, is shared with others, that you, you let your guard down. It's like in any fight. You let your guard down, and you get smacked again because you know you you didn't you didn't keep your defenses up. So that that's a concern I have. Well, we're we're, we're hoping you will help us get that message out uh, because you're right. We want to emphasize that um, sometimes low numbers uh, can mean uh, or, or can be interpreted to mean. Uh, this isn't as bad as we thought, but I I would remind you that there was a time in New York City when there were, when there were only nine positive COVID patients. And that of course blossomed uh, into what you see today. So this disease remains as contagious today as it did yesterday. So it only takes one patient. uh, We, we call that an index patient to spread to their friends and neighbors and co-workers who will spread to their friends and neighbors and co-workers, and it's off and running again. So uh, 
that that's one of the things I lose sleep over is thinking that someone will read in the news record that uh, the hospital is well prepared, the, the, the models are showing fewer cases and therefore fewer deaths, fewer hospitalizations, and oh, by the way, we only have nine positive in Campbell County. And so why, why can't we go back to work and why can't we open the movie theaters and bars again? And, and we're ju- we would just open ourselves back up to the threat all over again. And, it, and in some ways it would be worse because people would be more reticent about social uh, distancing and staying at home again. I, I just, that, that concerns me highly. So you're absolutely right. We want to emphasize that. We need to adhere to Governor Gordon's uh, stay-at-home order, and uh, and that's social distancing is is going to be with us for a little while longer. So we should get used to that, and and really be be thankful that there is a way that uh, we, we can control the spread of this. And and now we've learned that in fact, uh, staying at home, uh, being very cautious about uh, going out socializing with others the reason we're seeing the numbers come down coming down are because of that and and to the degree we maintain that uh, sort of discipline for a while longer uh, will be key to how well we we uh, come out on the other side of this but if we let up and uh, I know there are cries in our community already to let's go back to work uh, you could you could see something worse than we we thought would happen to begin with. And I might add, I've heard people say that, you know, people die from the flu, and so why don't we just get over it? Uh, This is different. Uh, For one, it's it's much more contagious, and two, uh, we see a higher incidence of people getting hospitalized and put on ventilators and eventually dying. So it's, it's more severe than the flu. The real concern here, um, besides uh, obviously we don't want people in our community getting sick and dying, the real concern is the healthcare system because uh, throughout the country, and ours is no different, hospitals are not structured any anymore for sudden and severe surges of patients, especially critically ill patients. And that's exactly what you see in New York City is that that system is completely overwhelmed. And so the, the idea that, well, we, we're going to see a certain amount of deaths from flu anyway, why don't we just let this thing run its course, uh, that's really terribly a lopsided thinking because what will happen is the hospital system will break. And when that happens, you, you've got a, a society that... that uh, won't like the result. Whether it's a small rural community like Gillette or whether it's New York City, it's not a pleasant result when the healthcare system gets overwhelmed. Because the very people that say, hey, we should go back to work, when that, when that system breaks and they get sick, they're gonna come to us and expect to be taken care of. And, and that's, that's the problem with these sudden surges and so we're not we're not equipped uh, to take a huge influx of patients all at the same time. And again, that's, that's what you're seeing in some of the larger metropolitan areas.